Praise the Lord. We want to welcome you once again to a program here at the UBC. Glory to glory. And um, every Sunday morning we are here. And we thank God for this opportunity to be able to bring the ministry of the word to you. And we also want to, to thank God for bringing us uh, through the whole year. We are entering the month of December. It is a festive season. God has been good to us. We want to thank God for you, uh, for your support, for viewing this program and this television and uh, for what God has done through your lives, the testimonies, and the salvations. And uh, we want to thank our team, production team that uh, keeps this program on air. The good work that they do, we are very thankful. We can't name you one by one, but we are very grateful. God richly bless you. And uh, we pray that even through the festive season and the new year, it's going to be even more wonderful. Today, I have a word to share with you. And uh, it is a word, it's one of the miracles of Jesus. Jesus performed many miracles. John says that if there were to be recorded many works, they were to be recorded, there would be no books to contain them. That's what the Apostle John says in the Gospel according to John, which is very true. But for these that were recorded, their signs, you know, and their teachings, they are for our benefit, for our salvation, and for edification. One of such miracles is the miracle of the woman with the issue of blood. And I want to speak today to us about the issue of blood. The Bible records and says there was a woman who had an issue of blood. And I want to speak to us a message I've entitled The Issue of Blood. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that you bless this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew chapter 9. This, this, uh, this miracle is recorded in all the, in the three Gospels. In all the three Gospels, they call them the synoptics. It's only John that... Uh, probably tactfully lifts it out, you know, he tactfully lifts it out. But for the three Gospels, and we are going to read the three accounts, we are going to read the three accounts. They recorded by Matthew. Matthew records it very briefly. He records it very briefly, and he uses three verses. Matthew chapter number 9, verse 20, 21, and 22. And suddenly, a woman who had a flow of blood, for 12 years, came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, If only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter, your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. See, uh, Matthew is very brief, uh, very brief, surprisingly, with this miracle. But he tells us almost everything that we need to know. He says suddenly because Jesus was on the way to restoring, to restoring, to heal, resurrecting Jairus' daughter. And then while he's on the way, suddenly this lady came. That it was not this lady's day. Jesus had not set off to see this lady. You know, it was not this lady's day. The Bible says, and suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind. She came from behind, not from the front, not from the face of Jesus. She came from behind. You know, she could not appear before Jesus. She was not worthy enough by any standards to come before Jesus. She came from behind. Child of God, it doesn't matter how you approach Jesus, just approach him. Just approach him. It doesn't matter how you come. It doesn't matter where you have been. It doesn't matter what you have been, what you have done. It doesn't matter how hard you have fallen. Just come the way you are. She came from behind. She came from behind and she touched Jesus while there were very many coming from the front of Jesus and uh, they didn't touch him. They didn't touch him. You know? uh, Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter number 5, verse 24 to 34. This is a long read. You're going to bear with me. So Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. 
verse 25. Now a certain woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things. Listen, this is the evangelist Mark, John Mark, and he's explaining, he's explaining this situation of the woman. He says, she had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. This situation was not, could not be handled by doctors, physicians. Two, this situation was, uh, it was uh, economically draining her. It was financially draining her. She had spent all that, all that she had. She spent all. She spent all. Remember, she cannot work because she has an issue of blood. By law, whatever she touches becomes unclean, and whoever touches her becomes unclean. So she, nobody can allow her to work. See? So it is economically draining her, you know? But even maybe what she owned was by inheritance. You know? She couldn't work, but she at least had something. But even what she had, she spent. And getting to this point of spending what she has, probably the people around her had spent so much and there was no change. She spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. 27, when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. She came be from behind. She could not appear from the front. She came from behind. It was not her day. It was not her call. Jesus was going to a better home. She had no home. She was probably had been confined somewhere, but she came from behind. She came behind protocol. She came behind protocol and still Jesus healed her. She still got healed. You know, she, she came behind the law. She, the grace, grace will find you even if you come from behind. Grace will find you even if you come through the back door. Grace will find you. There is enough grace for everybody that approaches Jesus. You know, when she heard about Jesus, she came behind in the crowd and touched his garment. She didn't want Jesus to touch her. Maybe she wanted Jesus to touch her. Maybe she thought Jesus could not touch her, but she touched Jesus. She touched Jesus. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. She had faith. She had faith for her situation. She had spent all that she had. She spent all the money. She spent all the, 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 the substance that she had. But faith, the only substance that she remained with was faith. It was faith. And when she remained with faith, she spent her faith in the right place. She spent her faith in the right place. You need to, to learn where to spend your faith. For she said, if I only may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Immediately, immediately, this was an immediate miracle. This was not a progressive miracle. I pray that today you will receive an immediate miracle. An immediate miracle. So the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Verse 30. This is what verse 30 says. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? What a question. And verse 31. But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you and you say who touched you who touched me you know there, there are people that are around jesus there are people that are around jesus but not everybody who's around jesus is touching jesus you see this is what you need to understand child of god not everybody who's in church is after what you're after so never be intimidated by people who pray loud or people who pray soft never be intimidated by people who sweat a lot while preaching if you're a preacher that don't sweat Never be intimidated by people who shout if you're one who prays quietly or who speaks quietly. You know, Jesus has a portion for everybody. Everybody has a place under the sun. So you have a place in the house of God. You see, if you pray loud, there are people who pray softly, but God will answer every, every, knee, every knee request, every prayer. 
There are people who, who shout, there are people who speak softly, but that, is no, that does not limit the working of the Holy Spirit. You see, the Bible says this woman came from behind and touched Jesus and her flow dried up. There were people that came from the front. In fact, the person that came from the front, Jairus, taking Jesus to his house, has not yet received the miracle, but somebody who has approached Jesus from the behind has received. So it, it doesn't matter how you approach Jesus, just approach him anyways. It doesn't matter what people say. As long as you can get to Jesus, everything, everything will change. What comes to my mind is another woman in the Bible that is talked of that was caught in the act. John chapter 8 says he was caught in the act. But when he was caught in the act, he was brought before Jesus to be stoned, but they didn't bring the man. You know, and when he she was brought before Jesus, they were waiting for Jesus to pass the judgment on the woman, but the judgment was passed on them. You see, when you come before Jesus, anything can happen. Things will change. Your life can be transformed. Just come to Jesus. Some people think that I have to repair myself. I have to make things better. I have to better myself before I come to Jesus. But you don't have to better yourself because you can't bear yourself anyway. Somebody said that the leopard, the leopard, cannot change its spots. You see, it's only God that can help us. It's only God that can change us. So she comes, she touches Jesus, and Jesus says, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you, and you say, who touched me? You know, it's like the disciples are saying, you guy, you, you started acting weirdly, you know. Ever since this anointing thing started increasing on your life, there's a certain way you are acting, you know. How can you say who touched me? Who touched you anyway? They are just people, you know, uh, thronging. They are people squeezing against you. There's nobody touching you. Yeah. But Jesus knew somebody had touched him. Listen to the next verse. And he looked around to see how he had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened, her came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Jesus had power come out of him. You know, he had power come out of him because there is somebody that had touched his clothes in faith. She touched Jesus by faith. She touched Jesus by faith. When you touch Jesus by faith, there is power that will flow out of him to heal you. Even today. Even today, the power, the power will, will flow into, supply flows into demand. And faith is that demand that is put on the anointing. And when we put a demand on the anointing, there is a flow of power. There may be people around, but not everybody is exercising their faith. I want to challenge you to exercise your faith. Exercise your faith for that provision, for that healing, for your family, for whatever it is. Our last scripture is in the book of Luke. You know, it's the same, the same account recorded by all these men of God. And it is Luke chapter number 8, verse 43 to 48. Remember, um, <clears throat> Luke is a physician. He's a doctor. So he, he gives us that touch in, in this uh, account of the woman with the issue of blood. Now, a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any physicians. Maybe there were some medical, uh, conventional medicine physicians. Maybe she used some herbalist to whatever came to her mind, whatever was recommended to her, she used. Whatever was recommended to her, she used because she wanted to be healed. You might be in that position. Anybody fighting for their lives, they would do anything. They would do anything to save their lives. You know, as a pastor, I know I've met, me, I've met many people. You, when somebody is fighting for their lives, they'll be desperate. They'll be desperate. They could do anything. Some people have the opportunity to fight for their lives. Some people, uh, others have to fight for, the, for their lives on their behalf. Maybe young children. You may have your, your son, your daughter. Maybe it's your mother. Maybe it's your father. Maybe it's your, a relative, a loved one. 
somebody that is fighting for their lives. Maybe you are fighting for somebody's life on their behalf. But you spend everything. These people spent everything for 12 years. For 12 years. You know, the Bible says a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any came from behind. Luke also emphasizes that. She came from behind. She didn't come from the front. She came from behind. The shame, you know, there are some happenings in life that bring shame and your face looks like it's no match for anybody. You can't show your face before anybody. You come from behind. When they call people, you step behind. When you sit on a function, you put yourself behind. Some people think it is humility. No, maybe it is low self-esteem. Not everybody that keeps themselves behind are humble. It's not being humble sometimes. Sometimes it is low self-esteem. You can't show your face. You think, you think your face is no match. You think your business is no match. You think your profession is no match. You, you are in a family where doctors and lawyers and what and what. And, and when they ask you about your profession, you can barely say it. The grace of God is able to get you from behind and put you in the front in Jesus' mighty name. And I pray that will be your portion. Verse 44 says, she came from behind and touched the border of his garment and immediately her flow of blood stopped. This was an immediate miracle. This morning, today, I'm praying that God will bring an immediate miracle, immediate provision, immediate change of things. Verse 45, and Jesus said, who touched me? Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitude throng and press you, and you say, who touched me? But Jesus said, somebody touched me, for I perceived power going out from me. Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said to her, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. The, the other part that I wanted to speak about uh, before I go into something else about this scripture is that the woman came trembling because she, she didn't know what to do. What she had done was, uh, was, uh, was, uh, was for death sentence. It was death in itself. She had literally made the whole city unclean that day. If it, were, if it had been proven that she was not healed, then that means she had to be stoned to death. Because you can imagine the multitude, because whenever an unclean person touches a clean person, the clean person becomes unclean and she's in a crowd, that means the whole crowd had been made unclean. But thank God for Jesus. When the unclean touch him, they become clean. When he touches the leper, they become cleansed. You cannot come with sin, however sin, however stained your cloth may be when you come to Jesus, when he touches you, you become as white as snow. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what your struggles may be, but I have good news for you. When you touch the board of his garment, she didn't even touch his entire cloth. She didn't even feel the entire cloth. No, she touched the border. She touched the border, you know. She, she touched the border. She, she didn't even have so much courage to touch the big of it. She felt not so much clean to touch so much of it. She touched the border of it. But you know what the good news? The Bible says if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you are able to say to this mountain, move. And that's how small her faith was or how big her faith was manifested in small things, and God responded to that faith. And then the other thing that happens in this passage is that Jesus calls on to her and says, woman? No, he doesn't say woman. He says, daughter, your faith has made you whole. This is the only person in the Bible that Jesus calls daughter. And you know what she's, he's doing? Jesus is literally saying, you are my daughter from today. You are ready for marriage. You were ready for marriage. All the guys on the village that thought that this was an unclean girl, she's not good enough for marriage, Jesus declares her clean. 
You know, according to the Bible, Leviticus 15, 16, 17, talking about blood, uh, 17, 11 says life is in the blood. Leviticus 17, 11 says life in this is in the blood. And Leviticus 15 details how you are supposed to handle and to treat a woman that is going through uh, her, her, her days, her unclean days monthly. She was supposed to be out of the camp and blah, blah, blah for seven days. But Leviticus 17, 11 says that blood, life is in the blood. Life is in the blood. And this scripture, to take you back, the scripture uh, says that this was healing of the woman with the issue of blood. Ladies and gentlemen, what I want to submit to you this morning is that the issue of blood is a blood issue. And each one of us has a blood issue. I don't know where the hemorrhage is in your life. I don't know where your life is is running off. This woman had a physical illness. You know, when the Bible speaks about the woman, the woman is a picture of the church and the woman is also a picture of Israel. And the Bible is saying it's either the church suffering, this one was a Jew. It's literally a believer. You could be a believer, but still suffering from a hemorrhage. It could be a financial hemorrhage. The Bible says that this woman had spent everything she had, but her life was not getting better. She spent everything. It could be a financial hemorrhage. The Bible says that she spent on physicians, but her situation got worse. Maybe it is a physical. It's an illness in you. And the more doctors you see, the worse it becomes. You see, maybe it is a social thing because with this issue of blood, she was not supposed to appear anywhere. She probably was confined. She probably put in a cloth. She probably could be walking. She was one that walked in the street saying, I'm unclean. She didn't even need to say I'm unclean because the whole community knew 12. 12 is also the number of the tribes of Israel. 12 is, is, is a completeness, a sameness of somehow. 12. 12 years, solid 12 years. You know, according to the Jewish culture, when a boy turned 12, they were initiated into a thread. It was a certain age of some kind of maturity when they start to train a child, a son, into the thread of his father. And now the Bible is saying, this lady is 12 years. So however you take it, whether for the female or for the male, it is 12 years. She has spent 12 years of uncleanness, a fullness of uncleanness. She's going into a maturity of uncleanness. And then something happens to her. The Bible says she said to herself that there is a sense of, of knowing that came into herself, a sense of knowing that came into herself. My people perish because of lack of knowledge. You know, you shall know the truth, a sense of knowing that came to herself. And then she woke up and she said, if I can only but touch the helm of his garment. And she said, but where will I pass? There are clouds. And she said, I have to brave myself to push myself through the crowds. There is nowhere Jesus has ever been and there are no crowds. Everywhere, there may be physical crowds. There may be mental crowds. You can imagine the emotional baggage that this woman carried for 12 years and everybody knows she's unclean for 12 years she can associate with nobody for 12 i don't know how long you have had that hemorrhage financial hemorrhage something that is draining your life the bible says life is in the blood i don't know you see if you have a physical illness somebody can marry you if they know that you are sick and your sickness is just physical but if that sickness is in the blood, they will not. Somebody can take you if they know that what you are going through is just physical. But if they have somebody to tell them that, you know, in that lady's family, this is what happens. In that man's family, this is what happens. It runs in the blood, then they, they lose interest. The issue of blood is a blood issue. But this is the good news today. John chapter number 6. Somebody say hallelujah. I feel like preaching to you today. The issue of blood is very important. And Jesus is the one that dries up the hemorrhage. Jesus is the one 
that dries up the fountain of blood, whatever is, is, is pulling your life out. Because life is in the blood. Life is in the blood. That hemorrhage financially, materially, emotionally, in your family, in your life, in your profession, whatever is draining life out of you, today that fountain has to stop in Jesus' name. Not tomorrow. This was an immediate miracle. And we're going to believe God for an immediate miracle in your life. John 6, 53, 54, and 55. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I said to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and will raise him up at the last day. Verse 55, For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. You know, this is the teaching that caused the star in the multitudes, the Bible says many left when Jesus told them that. And he turned to his disciples and said, you want to leave also? And Peter said, where can we go, master? You have the words of eternal life. The eating of the flesh and the drinking of the blood is very important. The eating, this is covenant. This is covenant. We have to enter the covenant of the blood of Jesus. You have to receive the blood of Jesus to flow inside of you. Whatever was not cleansed can be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. The devil wants to take life out of you. But Jesus is here not only to give you life, but to give you life more abundantly. John 10, 10. He wants to stop that flow, that hemorrhage in the name of Jesus. And I want to pray with you. But if you're not a Christian, you are not born again, I want you to pray this prayer first of all, and then I will pray to stop that hemorrhage, that blood, that blood-sucking spirit. Maybe it is a covenant. Maybe it is a ghost. Maybe it is a spirit. Whatever you call it, maybe it is a demon claiming for blood from you. You have given it cows. You have given it gods. You have given it sheep. You have given it chicken. You have given it pigeons. You have gi it's now demanding for people blood. It cannot be satisfied by blood of animals. The blood of animals and gods and sheep cannot satisfy the need that the devil has of your blood. It, there is nothing that can satisfy and quench that thirst of the devil, only the blood of Jesus. That sacrifice on the cross that takes away the sins of the world, it is the sacrifice, it's the atonement, it's the propitiation for our sins that only can satisfy. I want you to pray this prayer. Maybe you are not a Christian. Maybe you just bumped into this situation. Maybe you need prayer. You start with this one. You may not really believe, but you start with this. Say, dear Lord Jesus, today I have decided to receive the fellowship and the communion and the covenant of your blood in my life. Wash me with your blood. Cleanse me. Purify me. Forgive all my sins. Write my name. In the book of life and erase it from the book of death today i'm born again i'm set free cleanse me set me free deliver me and make me your own thank you jesus i'm saved in jesus name amen now i want to pray with you i, I don't know where your hemorrhage is maybe it is on part of your body there is a sickness not going away maybe you have physical hemorrhage blood flowing that can't stop bondage that you can't stop uh, the loss of money that you can't stop. You have spent everything that you have. There is no change. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Your word is true. You have said in your word that this woman with the issue of blood, she was so full of shame that she could not come before you by faith, but she came from behind. There may be many that we are praying with today that are so ashamed of what they are going through, they can't come straight to the face. Lord, but wherever, however they come, Lord, we bring them before you by the blood of Jesus and we speak unto every hemorrhage, every flow of blood, every issue of blood, every blood issue. Whether it is an issue of blood which is physical, whether it is a blood issue which is running in the family, running in that marriage, running in their business, running in that education. Lord, we put an end to it right now in Jesus' mighty name. We command every flow of blood right now, right now to dry. We command every issue of blood to be washed away by the blood of Jesus. We command every sick 
sickness of blood, every infirmity, every bondage, every covenant in the name of Jesus, blood covenants, word covenants, in the mighty name of Jesus, sexual covenants, to be broken by the blood of Jesus. And Father, we speak life, for life is in the blood. We speak life into that life, into that business, into that womb, into those tubes, in the name of Jesus, into the fallopian tube, in the mighty name of Jesus, into that heart. We command that blood problem to be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Whether your blood needs to be thinner, whether your blood needs to be thicker, whether the quantity of your blood is small, whether there are holes in your heart, whatever is your blood in the name of Jesus, we command it to align with the word of the Lord. Not tomorrow, not another week, not another day. We speak an immediate miracle, immediate miracle, healing right now, a sudden touch onto your system in the mighty name of Jesus. Every hemorrhage, whether you have a sickness, an infirmity, a chronic disease, cancer, we command you to die. Tumors, we command you to die. Fibroids, we command you to die in the name of Jesus. Whatever hemorrhage that is bringing financial disorder, financial Financial hemorrhage, financial strain to the family, to that man, to that woman, to that house. In the name of Jesus, we command you to dry from your very root. And Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you because you answer prayer. The issue of blood is being dealt with right now in Jesus' mighty name. Immediate miracles, immediate healing to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name. And somebody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to hear from you. Please let us know what has God done in your life. What is that healing? Check yourself. Check yourself right now. Check yourself right now. This lady, the Bible says she had the fountain drying and she knew she was healed. She didn't go to the washroom to check. No, she felt it. She believed it. She received it. There is a declaration over your life. Today, the Lord calls you daughter. Today, the Lord calls you son. You were a reject. You were an outcast. You have been received into the family of Christ in the name of Jesus and greater things are waiting for you. Look for a Bible-believing church. Go and testify of the goodness of the Lord. Testify to us. Send a message. Send an SMS. Tell us about what God is doing in your life and let us rejoice with you. God bless you. It is a wonderful season. We are so, we are so pumped up for this Christmas season. God is going to do great things this new year and we are looking to ending this year in style and in power. We are ending it big and strong to the glory of God and we are so, we are so um, energized we are so excited about this last month because there are greater things in store. We're going to see God move mightily. Whatever you didn't receive in January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, or October, even in November, God is going to release a double portion in December in Jesus' mighty name. The latter rain and the former rain are going to come in one season. You will enter 2018 prepared for even a brand new day. You will lack no good thing. The goodness of the Lord shall be your portion. The Lord is good. And he's going to manifest his goodness in your life. Be strong and of a good courage. Don't lose heart. Don't lose heart. Don't throw in the towel. Things are not falling apart. They are coming together for the glory of God. My name is Pastor Daniel Chisa. And I bless you today. Thank you for watching. Come and join us. <coughs> Excuse me. Come and join us at Arkwright Stage in Tebe Road. Come and visit us. You'll see a big signpost. Cornerstone New City Church. Get off there and come and be with us. 10 a.m. every Sunday. God is doing good and wonderful things. I invite you especially for this uh, next Sunday. Come and join us and uh, God will minister to you mightily. God bless you. Thank you for always tuning in and we'll see you next week.